you'll turn to page 356 and see if that refreshes your memory about a post you made about uh, the man uh, breaking into Larry English's house. Sorry, you said 356? Page 356, yes. Read it? Just to yourself. Oh, okay. So did you post about the intruder in Larry English's house? Yes, sir. And tell the jury what you posted. I said blackmail, short hair, tattoos on chest and arm, question mark. And that was in response to what? To a neighbor of ours, her husband's truck was broken into and two rifles and a pistol were stolen. Um, What's the date of your post? The date of my post? December 8th of 2019. December 8th, 2019, and you posted about a black male with short hair and tattoos on chest and arm. Why did you single out those characteristics? Well, whenever I spoke to the police, that's, and he showed me a picture, and that was the description that he gave me, and that's also what I could see from the videos. Um, at that time, I think we had several videos of um, a black male, short hair, tattoos, chest, and arm. Was the post on December 8th a, 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 a your description of the man on, in Larry English's house? Yes, sir. regarding Larry English's house. Yes, sir. Okay. Tell, tell us what you recall from that day. Larry either called, do you, I, I think he might have called or and sent a video um, and said, you know, that the guy, same guy, is back. Um, so Diego would usually go out the back because we thought that he was coming in the back. Um, so, it, but he didn't. He went out the front door um, and I went out behind him and then I saw Mr. Greg and Travis coming down the road, and I was telling them, like, shh, Diego, like, you know, be quiet, that's Diego. Um, I couldn't tell, I thought Travis was talking to his dad, um, but he was talking loud and excited, and I'm like, you know, hush, you know, someone's down there, be quiet. And I stood in my driveway, um, at the time we, our yards were <coughs> fenced. Um, your yards were not fenced? Our yards were not fenced, no sir. And so I have a really high powered flashlight and I turned it on and I shined it from my driveway to the river and I could see straight across the river. Um, so that way if he was running in the back, I would see someone running. Um, so this is, this is at night? Yes sir. It's dark outside? Yes sir. You're literally leaving your house and going out in my front yard. To your front yard. Do you yes, have sir. a weapon on you? Yes, sir. What do you carry? Yes, sir. What do you carry? Oh, what? I, um, pair ordinance 1911. Okay. Pistol? Yes, sir. 45. Okay, 45. Is it in a holster? Um, I think I might have had it tucked under my, under my arm because I was holding my flashlight. Now, why are you carrying your firearm out at night in a dangerous situation? Who knows what? You know, what am I going to encounter outside in my front yard? Um, okay. so for my protection, my children are right inside this door. So again, this is an intruder, a break, uh, uh, someone at Larry English's house. You're putting yourself at risk. In my yard, yes, sir. In your yard, okay. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever see the intruder that night? No, sir. Okay, but you, your husband was out, Mr. Travis and Mr. Gray. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, did you see police respond? Yes. Uh, how, how long did you stay outside looking for a possible intruder? Not long at all. I, you know, waited a couple seconds and I figured by the time Diego, you know, had got in, it, he would scare whoever it was and if so, they would be coming this way. Um, and shortly after I went inside. Okay. Did you post about this incident as well? I probably did. Okay. Um, turn to page, the first page, 347. and see if that refreshes your memory. Page 
Yes, sir. Did you post about this incident? Yes, sir. Okay. What date did you post? Uh, it looks like 12, uh, 2 12 of 20, February 12th. So the next day? Yes, sir. Um, and what did you post? I said, um, it's the same guy the last few times. We have him all over camera, but boy, is he fast, and he knows our neighborhood really good. Why would you say that? Because literally it's 90 feet, 95-ish feet. Um, my husband's pretty fast, but this guy was obviously, you know, way faster because Diego had never, you know, encountered him ever over there. So either he knows the neighborhood and knows, you know, where to tuck in and hide, or he's booking it. Okay. So... So, as of now, in February, still not found this, this intruder, um, and you're posting among your neighbors. Why are you posting this information? To let them know, hey, you know, this, this is the same guy. If it's not the same person, it would really be suspicious, but not, like, alarming. Um, the same person coming over and over and over. It just made me, you know, worry. Why is the same person coming over and over and over? And it, and it alarmed you because what were you thinking was happening? I really didn't know what was happening. I assumed Mr. English didn't know who he was and he had no business there, you know, according to him, and that was his property. And he had told us, you know, prior to that things had gone missing. So I just assumed the same person coming over and over and over, and you've had thousands of dollars of stuff missing. I <coughs> assumed. That it was the guy that would keep coming back. So you put these various pieces together and made an assumption. Yes, sir. Okay, you didn't see him steal anything. This this blackmail intruder. No, sir. Um, but from various pieces of information, you drew a conclusion. Yes, sir. Um, were you home on February twenty third? I during got the shooting. Home. No, sir. Okay, where were you and your husband? We were at church. Um, our church. St. Simon's Community um, was building a new campus here in Brunswick, and we were donating our time to build our pastor an office in the church. Um, so after church got out, we went and had pizza. We got new windshield wipers, and then we went to church. We did some drywall mud, and then went home. Okay. When you got home from church, did you find out about the shooting um, of Mr. Well, I was pulling into the neighborhood um, a cop come hauling tail in, and our neighborhood's quiet, mostly old retired people. Um, and I was like, what the heck is going on? So I got off you know, the side of the road, and he come flying on in. And I told my husband, I said, we're going to go and see what in the heck this happened, you know, what's going on? So I drove around past our house, and that's when we came up on the, the scene. scene. Yes, right, sir. Right, right, right. Did you see Travis McMichael out there? Yes, sir. Um, how did he look to you? He, I don't know if scared, he looked just not himself. He just had his hands up and he was just like, and I was like, what in the world? When you, when I came up on, I didn't know what happened. Um, he didn't know what in the world it transpired to go on, but he was bloody and he was just like pacing back and forth. And then I remember he just like kind of plopped himself down. Um, they had like a tree it was pretty tall and he just kind of like sat down and just kind of looked frazzled and it was like you know what the hell I think is what what I said okay did you stick around no I drove on my husband said you know he's dead go 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 we had our kids in the car so do you know if around. your surveillance cameras captured Mr. Arbery from that day yes sir and do you know what happened to the surveillance camera video from your house um we Diego gave it, put it on a USB, and gave it to a cop um, on the scene that day. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Perez. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Hey, Mrs. Perez, how are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good. We've met before and talked, haven't we? Yes, ma'am. All right. So... On the 23rd, you own a black car, right? Yes, sir. Oh, yes, ma'am. Sorry. It's okay. You can call me, sir. <laughs> no. Uh, um, but you were coming in, and Officer Duggan was speeding right past yeah, you. Yeah, somebody. Okay. And you went down. Diego said, no, keep going. Yeah. All right. So you took the kids home. Yeah. But he wandered on down to the scene, didn't he? Yeah, you? he wanted to, what in the heck, you know? It was pretty 
gruesome sight to come up on. So you want to know what what happened. <laughs> All right, now, um, let's talk about, I'm going to kind of back up and we'll talk about crime for a minute, okay? okay. Now, you guys had never been the victim of crime up until this June 30th, 2019, when the tools got stolen out of the unlocked car in your driveway, right? Yes. All right. But you guys normally locked your cars, right? Well, see, that's the thing with his truck. It actually had to go to the shop because Ford had some kind of problem where you would lock the truck and it would stay locked and then it would unlock itself. So he thinks he locked the truck. We said he locked the truck and come to find out the truck was having issues. So, gotcha. yeah. All right. So... As a Facebook administrator, you're just the person who's kind of like letting people join and that kind of thing. Yeah. All right. But after the theft of the tools, you decide to go ahead and get some cameras. Yeah. And you're willing to share with the neighborhood the images on the cameras. Mm -hmm. And you talked about the Facebook being used for things like water power, animal control. Yep. Okay. Uh, kids selling cookies, that kind of yep. thing. Charity events. Yeah. But your husband's not a member of the Facebook page. My husband does not do any kind of life log, social media, nothing. Okay. <laughs> so he's not paying attention to what's going on, on Facebook. No. Now, your husband went ahead and volunteered to help out Larry English, right? Yes. So he's the one who made contact with Larry English to say, hey, I'm willing to go ahead and assist you. You live two doors down. I think I had messaged um, his wife and gave him or her Diego's number and said, hey, you know, this is my husband's number. If you'll have your husband reach out to him, please. Um, and that's when they had a phone conversation. Right. Now, when you asked Amy English, can we put up these trespassing signs, was that before or after this homicide? I couldn't tell you. Okay. You think it maybe was afterwards? You can look at the Facebook um, messages. I honestly don't know. Did you private message her or? Yeah, private message. So it's not going to show up, do you I, think? All right. I don't know. I don't know how that goes. <laughs> okay. um, did they ever, before this incident, put up any no trespassing signs? I don't know what they did on their property. Well, did you see know. any no trespassing signs? They had a bunch of si different signs up, so I don't, I couldn't tell you what one was and what one wasn't. Okay. All right, and you're really close with Subi Lawrence. Yeah. She lives across the street. She does. All right. Um, and that's who your husband's also close with. You guys know each other for a very long time, right? Her mother. Okay. Annabelle Beasley. Yes. And right. they live right next door. Mm-hmm. And you were talking to Subi about what took place in the neighborhood, right? You yes. were informing her. Mm-hmm. So the problem with Larry English and his cameras is the camera goes off, he gets it on his phone, and then by the time he watches it, he calls Diego. Is that right? Now we know that's right. We thought he was calling the police and then calling Diego, but we've learned after talking with you that that was not the case, so yes. He was just calling Diego Drek. Unfortunately, yes. Not calling the police? No. And your husband had had it with that, hadn't he? Yeah, he, once he realized on February 11th, that's when he said, you don't ever have to worry about me. I'm not yeah. doing that again. Like, what in the world? Why would you put myself in danger like that? Because he thought on February 11th that Larry, Larry had actually called the police, yeah. But Larry hadn't called the police. No. And so your husband gets this Facebook message, or, no. or this, this text message. Yeah. Okay. I misspoke, but a text message. And he goes over there because he's trying to be a good neighbor. Yes, ma'am. He actually went into that house, didn't he? Yeah. He went and he's went in that house so, so many times. So. Uh -huh. And when he goes in the house, he's usually going, private property, private no property. trespassing, yeah. What are you doing here? I've heard him yell that, like, you know, what the hell are you doing here? Obviously not seeing anyone, but trying to get a reaction out of whoever is there. Yes. Because okay. he just wants the person to go away. Who are you? What are you doing here? Don't come back. This guy doesn't want you coming back. You know, you're bugging us. You know, what's going on? So on this night, though, oh, I'm sorry, this night. on the night of February 11th that we're talking about, remember that night? Yes. Okay, so Diego goes out of the house, and he goes over there mm -hmm. like he's normally doing. Does he have his high-powered flashlight with him? Yeah. Okay, and he's got his gun with him. Mm -hmm. And you come out the front door, and you see Travis and Greg McMichael. Yes. All right, they're in Travis's pickup truck. 
I think Travis might have been driving. Um, I don't remember if Mr. Gray and I said, I don't remember if he was walking by the truck or if he was in the truck. Um, but I, I, know, I remember seeing both of them. All right. And so they're coming back from which direction? From, towards the, from their house towards the front of the neighborhood. Okay. And you're communicating with them, telling them what? I was trying to tell him, like, hush, hush. Because, I mean, he was just so, wah, wah, wah. I'm like, who are you talking to? Shut up. What are you doing? I didn't realize until, you know, later that he was on the phone with 911. I did, thought he was talking to his dad, so. Gotcha. And Greg McMichael, did you see him then go into the house as well? I didn't see him go into the house because of the stuff, like Larry had a trailer and stuff, so you can't see, like, the front of Larry's house from my driveway looking over. Um, but you can see the front yard, and I saw, you know, his truck. He pulled it up in the front yard with his bright lights on. And I don't think he had, I don't, Greg might have went in, but I think Travis stayed. I remember seeing Travis um, at the truck, the back of the truck. So we say Travis so, pulled the truck up. Where did he pull it on the street or somewhere else? In the sh so say this is the front yard and this is the street. He kind of you know, I think it might have been hanging out in the street, but I know you know he pulled it up and he had his light shining on the house. And. You were afraid Greg and Michael was going to go in there and shoot your husband, weren't That's you? That's why I was trying to tell him, hush, my husband's in there, my husband's in there, letting him know, hey, if you come across someone, you know, it, it's not, it, I didn't know how they, you know, got down there. I didn't realize that Travis had saw the guy or any of that. I thought, oh gosh, Larry English is telling someone else in the neighborhood and now, you know, they're going down. Like, holy cow, this is not going to be a, a good situation if he didn't know my husband was in the house. So that's why I was trying to let him know, like, hush, Diego's in there, you know. Because you knew that they carried guns as well. I didn't know them to know that they carried guns. No you didn't know them like that? No, I didn't. But you were afraid that if they had a gun, they'd find your husband and shoot him? Well, I knew that my husband had a gun, and I didn't want them to see my husband with a gun and just think he is this random person in the house and he's armed, so therefore, you know, we need to bring a little bit some. That's what I just wanted them to know. Hey, that's my husband in there. Now, let's go ahead and talk about, I want to make sure I've covered this. Oh yeah, with regard to Larry English and the missing stuff on his boat, he told you he suspected his subcontractors, right? No, Diego um, actually told him. He didn't say he suspected anyone, but Diego said, well, what about the people with the tool bag? You know, when they came out, is the tool bag heavier or fuller than what it looked? And he said, well, it might be, you know, I'll check it out. I don't remember if he actually did come back and say, I know he came back and said, I asked them, but I don't remember if he ever said, yes, it was them. But I'm thinking that he didn't because we didn't know who had taken it. Um, so I'm thinking if he said it was my HVACs, we wouldn't still be thinking somebody, you know, is taking this. <coughs> okay. So I want to make sure because we have, we have our subcontractors, mm -hmm. okay, and then we have the white couple from November 17th who also went into the house. Yes. So are you talking about the Mary? white couple is who I assumed was a subcontractor because um, the kind of tool bag he took is like, an electrician bag, well, typically an electrician bag. Um, so that's what I assumed was a subcontractor. So you assumed that the white man and white woman who had gone into Larry English's open unsecured construction site on November 17th, 2019, were actually some of his subcontractors? Yes. And that they'd gone there to rip him off or steal some stuff? I did not think that. My husband thought that. And he told that to Larry? Yes. But I guess my, my question is, did you, or to your knowledge, your husband, were you guys ever informed that Larry actually suspected his own actual subcontractors, the HVAC guys? I was not aware that Larry suspected that, no. So Officer Rash never told you that either? No. So on December 8th, we're talking about December 8th, um, and Renee Herndon posting about okay. her car getting broken into. Yeah. Okay. So you remember that post? Mm -hmm. I do. What page was that again? Let's go ahead and flip to page 356. Okay. 
All right, so do you remember Renee Herndon on 12-8, 2019, talking about thieves broke into her truck last night, her husband's truck, and stole those guns? Yeah. Okay. And you then responded, black male, short hair, tattoos on chest and arm. Mm-hmm. I was asking if that, if that was the description. Yeah. Right. And she says it's hard to tell. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the police showed us a picture of the guy you're talking about. Yeah. All right. And we're going to keep an eye out. It was Officer Rash, and he sounded like he's pretty familiar with all the suspicious activity that's been going on in our neighborhood. This mm-hmm. is getting ridiculous, is what she responded. Is that that's right? what she wrote. Okay. Renee Herndon. And did you then check the cameras for her that night? Yes, I did. Okay. And you saw a suspicious car? I did. And did you also see the pictures that Renee Herndon had posted in about the, the guy? Mm-hmm. Okay. I think she posted it later on. So I'm going to show you what's already been marked and admitted as states 327A and 327B. Are those the pictures that she had posted? Yep, those are the ones she posted. Okay. And did you ever, um, well, did Officer Rash ever follow up with you all and tell you that it was a white guy who had broken into their Jeep? No. Mm-mm. You didn't know that? No one ever followed up with this or anything, so. Yeah, because we had pictures of the car, um, or what we assumed was the car, and they never came by to get those on a USB. So, so the police never came by to get anything from you guys about no. the car. About any of this, no. Let me make sure I covered everything. Okay. okay. Defense, they may have some more questions for you. I don't know. Okay. Hey, redirect. Great. Mr. Perez, could you just describe the lighting conditions at 226 Hill Drive at night? There's no lights um, there. Um, I know we had a street light put in. Um, not, I don't know when, because there was no lights. Um, around did the, there. Did the, the, the darkness, the lack of light at that location, cause you even greater concern if there's an intruder coming in that late? Just because it was so pitch black, dark, literally, and no lights around, it's kind of like, you know, why kind of thing, but... Not just a looky-loo looking at architecture or something. You can't see in anything in there that late at night. I mean, I was only there once at night, but the night that I was there, okay. you couldn't see really anything. Um, the state asked you about the Renee Herndon incident in which weapons were stolen out of their cars. Um, when she posted, it's getting ridiculous, what did you under page 356, what did you understand her to be talking about, it's getting ridiculous? There were several um, car break-ins, um, I know like backpacks were rummaged through and some kids' backpacks were found in the, you know, different yards and stuff. Um, there was just a lot of suspicious activity, a lot of people coming and going um, into Mr. English's house, and it's just an uneasy feeling to not know, you know, who it is, and the cops are being called, and they still don't know, you know, who it is. It's just not a good feeling. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, yes, you may step down. Thank you. And you are released. Thank you. Thank you. Your Honor. She's also under our subpoena. Oh. We're going to reserve the right to recall. I'm sorry, you are, you are subject to recall, but you're excused for the day. Thank you. Defense okay. calls Jack Rinson.
Swear to tell the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to take a very short recess, uh, plan to come back probably in the next five, ten minutes. It's all right.